You're listening to Mad Radio. Mad Radio. Mad Radio. Make a difference. Quick, me lads. Hoist the rigging. I, I can't splice the main brace. Oh, Batten down the hatches. I I'm going below deck to get the show started. And now the man with two wooden legs, one glass eye, and a hook for a nose. It's Mr. Lily Liver himself, Brandon McCarty. Well, thank you, Petey. Hey, welcome in, welcome in, all you scallywags. You swashbucklers, landlubbers, horn swagglers, and salty dogs to the Peg Leg Podcast, a show where we delve into the lives of fellow pirates and learn a bit more about the unsung heroes among us all. Arr! This week, we travel back to the Great Valley Museum. Oh, yeah, to speak with a museum specialist who has a bachelor's in history from the Cal State Fullerton. Go Titans! <laughs> uh, she has lived and studied in Korea for about a year, and we'll get into that. She has worked in museums for about 12 years to include the Art and History Museum in Napa, the Children's Museum in Orange County, and the Natural Science Museum in Modesto. On a personal note, she volunteers at the Modesto Police Department. Now that sounds interesting. We're going to talk about that as well. One of her bucket list items is to visit all 63 national parks. So far, she has visited a third of those. For her first solo trip, she hopped on a train to Chicago from Emeryville, and it took 52 hours. There has got to be a story there. We're going to get to that as well. She finally moved out <laughs> in her 30s. Uh, well, and I'm sure she's going to tell us why she's she took so long. Uh, also, she is the best auntie to her four nephews and nieces. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the poop deck, Eden Chung. Arg! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me, Brandon. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> so, Eden, how did you find your way to MJC? Well, um, as you've mentioned uh, in my introduction, I, um, I worked in museums, and I love working in museums, and specifically museum education. I love working with the kids, and, you know, I feel like I'm a kid at heart, so I've always kind of, you know, loved just, you know, play. I, I call it playing with them, but really um, learning and teaching um, children at the museum setting. Um, so I actually, right before here, I was in Napa. So it was my big move. You know, I was in LA for most of my life. So wait a minute, you left wine County, <laughs> wine country for Modesto. What, what was that yeah, all about? You know, that's so funny you say that. Cause that's the most common reaction I get. They're like from LA to Napa to Modesto. Wait, <laughs> right, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, I've always, you know, I grew up in the city, you know, I grew up in Seoul or I was born and raised in Seoul in okay. Korea and then, you know, in L.A. And I lived, you know, fairly close to downtown L.A. So a lot of, you know, just city life going on. And so that's kind of what I've known. Well, I've always wanted to be uh, live in the country. I've loved just, I don't know, just something about just the peace and quiet, no traffic and just, I, mean, I don't know. But I fantasized this whole country life. And so um, I had gone to Napa because I thought, oh, you know, I've never been to Napa. That's kind of far away from L.A., something <laughs> right, new. Right. Well, once I got there, I was there for about a year, and I thought, well, it's kind of expensive and very touristy. Um, so I was kind of looking around. I thought, you know, maybe oh, this is a little bit too much for me. It was very expensive. <laughs> um, so I was kind of looking around, and then I saw this position, this museum specialist in Modesto, and I've never ever heard of Modesto in my life before, or I've never even been on the 99 freeway. <laughs> Whoa. So um, I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to apply. And it's museum education. Why not? You know, it doesn't hurt. So I did. And I didn't hear anything back for about a, about two months. So I thought, oh, I kind of forgot about it. And I thought, you know what? I clearly didn't get it, right? And so I was applying for other positions. And then I got a call back and said, hey, come for the interview. And so 
I thought, oh, great. And so I did. And yeah, and here I am. <laughs> and let me tell you, though, I do yes. have to say, I know people think you came from Napa, but I absolutely love Modesto. Just everything, people, just the place and just being two hours away from everything. So, yeah, I love it. And does it smell the way that you <laughs> from is do, do, uh well we we've got some uh, we've got some country obviously but yeah it smells a lot cleaner than um L A <laughs> none right. of that smog <laughs> right so it does <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where did you grow up then so I I was born in Seoul South Korea so I came immigrated with my family when I was in first grade um, about six seven years old. And so I grew up in this little tiny, it's not really a city in L.A. area called um, Hacienda Heights. Not a lot of people know about it. Um, I grew up there. And then um, before moving up here, I lived in South Pasadena. Um, and then from there, I went to Napa and then here. So mostly in the L.A. area um, was where I kind of grew up. So you spent most of your, like, you know, elementary and high school years in in LA then. Yes, yes. And you know, you had mentioned I moved out of the house at 30, so that's when, <laughs> right. that's when I left LA and came to Napa. So, oh, okay, yeah, just okay. when I was about 30. So. What was the scene like down there? I I'm, I'm not too familiar with. I know there's a lot of different portions of LA, so um oh gosh i mean la's great it's a lot there's always something to do and you know a lot of my friends are there my family and friends are there so it there's always something to do for everyone you know i mean it's just when i say la it's such a large part of southern california right so i mean i mean just name it you know the other day um i was in a classroom doing programs and some teacher was like, oh, you, you're from L.A.? I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, did you go to Disneyland? And I said, you know, I went to Cal State Fullerton, which is right next to, to Disneyland. So I was kind of there all the time. <laughs> I, had a, I had an annual pass and just kind of went after class, you know. So it was just kind of different, you know. Um, there's always something to do. And it's a lot of fun being there. So when you moved to uh, Napa, did you find that you spent your weekends – wine tasting or and then and then the follow-up question would be do you have a favorite oh yes yes so you know it's interesting because before i went to napa i didn't drink i didn't drink at all so i actually picked up drinking when i went to napa and i mean how could you not when there's just so much wine and i always tell people you know i worked at a museum there and we had a lot of events so you know some wineries would have events at our museum and they gave you just free bottles of wine you know they're like oh you know oh. we have this bottle of wine we were just introducing you know thank you for you know helping us with this event so they just give you bottles and i'm talking like 90 150 bottles you know so i mean how do you not pick up drinking there um maybe i need to change yeah. just jobs or something <laughs> Yeah. Um, but you know what? Um, when I lived there, I didn't really go wine tasting. Um, only when my friends visited or family visited from outside of Napa, we would go. But usually, you know, we go. I mean, it's just like everywhere else. Right. Me and my coworkers, we go happy hour, get margaritas, you know, <laughs> at the Mexican restaurant. So and, you know, it does kind of add up, you know, um, you can only do so much. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right. Um, and my favorite, um, I can't say I've tried every single wine there, but from the ones I have tried, um, I do love this. Uh, it's a little winery in Yontville um, called Silver Trident, and their cabs, their cabs are just so good. So that's kind of my favorite at the moment. Okay. Well, we know what to get you for Christmas yeah. then. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so uh, what are some of your hobbies outside of work? Um, you know, my hobbies, um, I'm always out and about. I like to discover new places. Um, I really enjoy hiking, um, but I've noticed Modesto's fairly flat. <laughs> so yes. I, yeah. So I have to actually drive an hour and a half up the mountain to go and, you know, kind of going alone up the mountain hour and a half wasn't probably the best route to go. So, um, I've kind of stopped that. So I started going to, you know, just more state parks and, you know, Yosemite. I know that's not any safer or better, but I felt it was a little bit, you know, I don't know. It's that's kind of cooler than just kind of going in random hills up the mountains. Um, and I really like reading, you know, I really enjoy reading and, um, Ooh, I picked up a new hobby during the pandemic and it's cooking. 
Ooh. I really enjoyed cooking. Okay. And I'm not very good, but I really enjoy it. Yeah. Is there a particular dish that you know that you've just nailed? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Okay. And I do cook mostly Korean. And there's this kimchi. You know, have you heard of kimchi? <gasps> I've had both the summer and the winter okay. kind oh, okay. in, so you know in exactly. South Korea. Oh, wow. So you yes. know exactly what you're talking about. Absolutely. Okay. So I think, personal opinion, is I think I make the best kimchi stew with pork ribs. Yeah. I don't think I've had it with pork ribs. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. It's a it's a life changer, let me tell you. It's, it's a slow cooked. A lot of Korean food is slow cooked. So I cook it over the fire for about four or five hours, and it's just like... Chef's kiss. Are you putting this stuff in the ground like they do over there too? (laughs) In jars to to, to ferment? Oh my gosh, no. No? It's because they have that special clay pot they do it in. Right. Yeah, we don't have those. (laughs) They're really kind of hard to get here, so. But that would be fabulous. Right. Oh, absolutely. See, I know what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm impressed. (laughs) Yes, somebody is. (laughs) So you have visited a third of the of the state parks that you've wanted to visit Mm -hmm. what is one of the ones that you're just like this is my i I can't wait to get to this location oh my god so kind of like my favorite right okay well this is my top three or more like top two okay glacier national park oh my goodness that place was when i got there i thought oh my goodness this is paradise this is exactly what god saw when he first created paradise and i was just so Odd. I mean, it was. It felt like a little piece of heaven on earth. So yeah, Glacier National Park, top two, for sure. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't even ask you about the books that you've been reading. Some. Who are some of the authors? Uh, what do you gravitate towards? <laughs> I always giggle at this. Don't one. say Harley Quinn novels, please. It is. Oh my! <laughs> How did I guess that? That's like. Um, it's not quite Harley Quinn, but um, <laughs> okay. you know, I, I'm not gonna lie. I do enjoy I do enjoy historical romance. I mean, I did major in history, so I kind of have a little fantasy outside the real world, you know, <laughs> that I enjoy. Who doesn't want to meet Prince Charming on a white horse, right? right? Um, I do read a little bit of that, and I read more. Um, um, you know, I actually like history books. You know, factual books. Um, I really enjoy nonfiction. Um, I couldn't tell you on top of my head who I who I really enjoy right now, but yeah, I really like nonfiction, bibliographies, and things like that. Okay, all right. So I totally forgot almost to ask about this, but uh, you are volunteering for the Modesto Police Department. What's that all about? Oh yeah, you know, I actually just got started. I started the process in summer, and they have a very extensive background check. Let me tell you, I've never been so cleanly really? <laughs> researched in my background yeah um so i've always enjoyed volunteering you know I, working in museums i've always been in nonprofits, and uh volunteers has been a great you know it's all it's always been one of the biggest assets to nonprofits and museums you sure. know as a whole and so i've always liked to you know i've always enjoyed that and i've always seen uh enjoyed working with volunteers and seeing them so i wanted to kind of you know, kind of give back and be a volunteer myself, kind of at the other side, being the in the other side. And so I've I've volunteered before at a different museums and, you know, things like that. But I wanted to try something new. And so recently I've got into crime and I'm just I've just became this crime buff and I just love crime, everything right about it. <laughs> um, so I thought, what a better way to go than to MPD, right? Modesto Police Department and just kind of see what's going around town and so i actually signed up and i finally after five months i finally got my uniform and and it's really neat because you know you get your whole you you get your entire uniform your little badge and from head to toe yeah this whole shebang and it's so legit and so um i just started and so you know as a volunteer what we do is um I, i just started training literally this past sunday is you know you go on neighborhood patrol um give out non-combative subpoenas, which are, you know, not as, I guess, dangerous, I guess, is what I heard. (laughs) Sure. Oh, they can be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, like special events and stuff. So um, it's kind of fun because I'm meeting a whole different set of people there, um, of volunteers, and just it's it's just so much fun. And I've always kind of really uh, supported, you know, what the police do and just for the community. And so I really wanted to be part of that and to learn about the community and see kind of what's going around town. (laughs) 
Nice. You know, one of the other things that you had mentioned is that uh, you had taken this train trip that took 52 hours, holy moly, uh, from Emeryville to Chicago. What was that like? I don't know that I've ever been on <laughs> any kind of transportation for that long. Yeah, you know, I wanted to try something different, and I thought, what could I do by myself that I can go far without just being on a plane? So I thought, you know what? I'm going to take the scenic train. Okay. And there's a scenic, um, it's called Zephyr from Amtrak, and you go, you start at Emeryville, and you go all the way to Chicago, and you stop at, you know, Denver, Colorado for a couple hours, and then, you know, there's stops along the way. And there's, it was really interesting, I have to say. You know, three days was a lot, I have to say, but... I mean, just the type of people there and just the things you see. I literally, I literally saw, like, so much drama on there in the 52 hours. Oh. I mean, it was almost like a telenovela. I mean. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> there was a, I got to tell you this. I mean, there's this. It was just, oh, my goodness. I was so entertained. So there was a lady that si was sitting next to me, right? <laughs> yeah. Never met her. When I was in line to get on the train, I mean, she looked like a hot mess. I mean, you know, she had so much stuff, you know, and she was kind of tipping over all her stuff and like people in line were trying to help her put it back into her cart, you know, that she was getting. I'm like, oh, man. And, you know, you're and I'm thinking there, I'm like, this is a pretty big train. So you hope and I hope to God. I was like, please don't sit next to me. Please don't sit next to me. But, you know, it's times like this. They don't listen to your prayer. That's and right. she sat right next to me. And there's a reason why one goes solo on a trip, right? You think, okay, it's because I want to be myself, me, and just me. Right. I'm not here to talk to anybody. I don't want to socialize. I'm here because I want to be by myself. And so, you know, she's a solo traveler. I'm a solo traveler. So she looks over at me. She goes, hey, oh, so where are you going, right? I'm like, oh, you know, Chicago, blah, blah, blah. She goes, oh, I'm going to New York. But, you know, but I'm going to Chicago and I'm going to go on. She's like, hey, you know, um, I have a bottle of Riesling, you know. We can have some sip sip and, you know, we can have a really great time. And I was like, oh, my goodness, no, no. If I wanted Riesling, I would have brought my own Riesling. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you could already tell she was a little off. And then the next thing I know, you know, she goes off and she comes back with a guy. And I thought, oh, wait, she didn't, she didn't get on this train with a guy, right? And so then, and then this was that weekend of President's Day, you know, so it was right like around – valentine's day as well too oh, and of course okay. yeah i see where you're going here. <laughs> and then of course she was telling me her life story about how she was divorced and she's running away from her husband just the whole spiel and i was like you i can't even make this up brandon i just can't and you know she's sipping she's doing sip sip on her riesling <laughs> and she's telling me her life story and i'm like oh my god this could be a really long 52 hours right <laughs> yeah. it's already long enough <laughs> So she comes back with some guy, and they're just sitting there becoming all, you know, cozy and cuddly. And I'm like, where'd this guy come from, right? And the next thing I know, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, we made reservations at the dining cart. We're going to go get dinner. It's Valentine's Day. I'm like, oh, good for you, right? So this whole thing is happening. So I was like, oh, nice, good for you. You know, you just got out of a divorce, and now you might have met a new, you know, a budding romance. You know, good for you, girl. Like, good for you. So there they are. And then the next thing I know, you know, this is like day two. They're having their dining car romantical, you know, romance. I'm sorry, romance dinner. You know, I'm like, <laughs> yes. oh, wow. And then on the third day, I mean, I mean, and, you know, they were disappearing into the bathroom a couple of times. I mean, I'm not asking questions. There's, you know, there's things that, you know, they were doing their thing. They were doing their thing. So, yeah. And then finally on the third day, I mean, I guess it didn't work out. Right. Because, you know, obviously the third day is our end of our end of our train trip. And so. He kind of went his way, and, and she went her way. So I don't know. I just saw a little beginning, middle, and end of a relationship all in three days. It was very entertaining. <laughs> they should have gone on the love connection or something. That's uh, I know, wow. right? Yeah. I mean, I hope she's happy somewhere, wherever you are, you know? I mean, I hope you're really happy doing your thing. I, well, I hope for you that you at least got to see the sights <laughs> without being completely, uh, you know, <laughs> oh. sidetracked by uh, by all of this uh, uh, drama and whatnot. I know. Um, it was a lot of fun. You know, I went and um, I got to see some of the museums. And anywhere I, like to, anywhere I go, I like to see museums and just kind of their cultural, I guess, scene. Um so it was really nice. We stopped at Denver and, you know, they were changing trains. So I was there for a couple hours. And so I've never been to Denver. And so I was there for like five hours 
downtown area. So I got to explore a little bit and um, I got to see a little bit of um, Chicago. And yeah, it was really fun, actually. I, I think, you know, if anybody is questioning if they want to do it, I would totally recommend they do it. Although I did fly back. I didn't think I could do another 52 hours oh. back. Yeah. So did you have a... Uh, a The bed car? Right. Did yeah. you... No, I didn't. Oh, you were yeah, upright for the whole... Exactly. Oh, well, my goodness. Well, the thing is, is if you get a little bedroom with a bathroom and shower and the bed, it's really expensive. Okay. It's really expensive. And, I mean, it's you're not really getting much in the train. You know, I figured, you know, I can sleep... I'd rather sleep in the chair for two days and get a really nice hotel when I get there, which is what I did. Okay. So when I went to Chicago, I did um, get a nicer hotel and I really enjoyed myself. I thought, why not? You know, um, but it was really nice to train. I mean, they have a little observation deck kind of car where you sit sideways and it was really, really nice. I mean, hmm. uh, yeah, it was so scenic. It was really nice. Um, I was telling my friend about it and she goes, Hey, let's do it again. I'm like, yeah, I'm absolutely down to do it again. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Without the drama this time. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, you know, free entertainment is free entertainment. You can't even pay to watch things like this. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fun. What is something that you pride yourself in? Ooh, what do I pride myself in? Um, You know, this sounds a little bit cocky, and I don't mean to sound that way, so I hope um, you know, people who don't know me who's listening to this don't feel that way. But She's not cocky <laughs> at all. I will vouch for you on this. Um, you know, but I've always kind of prided myself in, in kind of my personality. And I thought I was pretty, I always prided myself in kind of being well-rounded and kind of being a people person. And, you know, I, I love people. I love being around people. And I love talking to people. I like to learn about them. So I've always kind of really liked that about myself and just kind of, you know, just being this fun person and, you know, talkative. And I'm kind of willing to talk to you. I mean, you know, I <laughs> I have volunteers and, you know, employees that come to my office and we talk a little bit longer than we probably should. Um, but, yeah, I've always I've always thought that was because they really enjoyed talking to me and vice versa. I enjoy talking to them. And so. I don't know. I've kind of always kind of prided myself in, in that part of my personality. Excellent. What motivates you? Uh, well, what really motivates me, I think, is, you know, I think it's trying to be, um, you know, trying to better myself, I think. You know, I'm, I'm definitely a go-getter. I don't like to sit at home and do a whole lot of nothing. I'm always out and about. And so I always like to learn something new. You know, and that doesn't necessarily mean a sp certain, you know, you have to learn something new at a specific place in time, but you just, you know, meet people and, you know, you learn something new about even just them or the world or, you know, and I don't know. I just, just a different perspective on things. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always liked seeing that. And, you know, that kind of comes from I've always been very sheltered and coddled and. You know, I've kind of had a very narrow perspective growing up, and that's really limited in who I was as a person and meeting certain type of people or just doing certain type of things. And so now that I'm a little older, I always think, you know, I'm a little wiser. <laughs> so my perspective has opened up a bit. And so um, I'm always kind of trying to, I'm like a little sponge now. Now that my whole perspective opened and I see a lot more and feel more and see more. So I've been trying to be that better version of me with this, you know, this newfound me, I guess. <laughs> I wish I had half your energy. My goodness. <laughs> uh, what do you like about the MJC community as a whole? Oh, you know, I have to say they're one of the friendliest people I've met. And I'm not saying anything bad about my previous jobs or people I've met or worked there. Right. But, I mean, I... You know, where I work at the museum, I don't see a whole lot of people. You know, I work not even in the front, but my office is in the back corner, in a dark corner. And, you know, Arnold's probably put me there for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> You're right next to all the reptiles. Exactly, right? right. Just wild as the rest of them. <laughs> um, so I, uh, the, the people I do meet, um, you know, through, you know, different events or just them coming through. Um, yeah, everyone just been so friendly and just so much fun and so much energy. And it's always a joy to see them. And yeah, I've always really enjoyed that. It's, you know, I think wherever I work, wherever I'm at, it's always been the people. And so I've noticed that here, um, everyone I've met have been very friendly and they're just, they're just kind of fun people to talk to. So that's what I really enjoy about it. Yeah. 
Do you have a favorite place to eat around town here? Ooh, yes. And I almost don't want to share it because I don't want it to get <laughs> oh, out. <laughs> no. So I found this little tiny hole in the wall sushi place called Modesto Sukiyaki. Oh. And it's right behind Mr. T's in that same mall. Yes. Okay. So have you heard about it? No. Okay. So, I have now. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is why I don't want it to get out. <laughs> it's um, right behind the, the donut the, shop? Yeah. Yeah. In that mall. And it's a sushi place, and I love sushi. And so, I don't know, maybe you can fit maybe maximum 50 people in there or even less there. Yeah, but, I mean, their sushi is one of my favorites here. What about it is so good? Oh, gosh. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm no... I'm no expert on fish and, you know, sushi, but I just felt their rolls are good. Their fish feel very fresh. I mean, I don't know. Everything just everything I've had there so far has been really, really good. So is there a particular role that you are uh, that you that you go for when you go out? Oh, I'm a nigiri person. I don't really do rolls. I just go for the rice and just the raw, you know, really the yeah. sashimi sashimi. Yep. That's the way to go. Ooh. Yeah. Did I ever tell you I've had a live octopus before squirming in my mouth? Oh. I know. What? I know. Yeah, I know. That was my what? first sushi experience. I, I probably would have given up if that would have been my first. What was that like? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So that's how I kind of got into sushi was um, so I was in Korea. That one year I was studying there. And I was with my professor and our classmates. And it's one of those things where in Korea, you know, you really have to respect your elders and your professors. So, you know, this professor knew that I was from America. And he's like, oh, I bet you've never tried half of this stuff. So you got to sit next to me and you got to try these delicacies, you know. And I thought, right. oh, cool. Like, what could it be? I'm Korean. It can't I mean, surprise me, right? And this is a time before I was drinking, right? So I was just drinking Cokes, many, many Cokes. <laughs> And he orders me this this dish, and they bring it out, and it's chopped up octopus legs. Okay, it's not the typical octopus you see, but it's it, it's more common in Korea. Well, there's a threshold where you gotta eat this dish because you gotta eat it while it's still fresh and moving. So they have it out there, and it's like just has sesame oil on it, and you put some chili paste on it, and it's moving in your mouth. And I oh. mean, it's moving. <laughs> So, yeah, mm. I'm, I've never chomped so fast and hard as I did that <laughs> night and drank a whole can of Coke just to wash that down. That was my first sushi experience. And now here I'm at um, Modesto Sukiyaki oh, now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I've come a long way. <laughs> would you Would you do it again? Absolutely. Ooh. Yes. Okay. I, I, we got to go out then. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yes. We may have to try that out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you may have already you may have already uh, uh, covered this, but uh, do you have a funny story or experience that you could share with us? Oh, you know, I do. Uh, yeah, it's more like an embarrassing story. Okay, we like those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was with a friend in the winter. We were at Redwoods National Park, you know, up north. Yes. And so it was in the winter, so there's not a whole lot of people there. It's you know they have a very few. Uh, I guess, number of visitors there. And so my friend and I, we're at this one spot and, you know, they have the little porter parties, but it's more like, you know, it's just kind of like a hole in the ground and it's just like a stinker, right? Mm -hmm. And so we go in and like, oh, there's no way. I can't even hold my breath long enough to go pee in there. There's just no way in hell I'm going to go in that, you know, porter potty. <laughs> and so we look around, we do this whole like looking around, no one's there, you know. And so she, I was like, hey, you know what? You squat. You know, Papa Squat, you do your business, I'll be the lookout. So you go first. <laughs> and so she goes, we're all good. So it's my turn, right? So I'm like, hey, make sure you look out. And so here I'm at. The moment I pop a squat, I feel a sting. And I feel a good sting right on my left butt cheek. And I just jump up. I couldn't even do my business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so no. here I am. And I am and I just tell my friend, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I think there's a bee. I think I, I got stung by a bee or something. And so she's, I was like, can you take a look? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good friend right there. Yeah, and, and luckily she's my best friend who I travel with all the time because I couldn't see far enough. And, right. you know, if you've been stung by a bee, you got to get that stinger out. And here we are, you know, I had my butt cheek out and she's trying to check for stingers and she's like, I don't see any stingers. I'm like, well, can you at least try to help me wipe it off? 
It's like, here was some little tissues. I'm like, just help me out here. It's stinging, you know? And so that happened. And so I started freaking out. I thought, oh my goodness, maybe it's a poison ivy. I need to get to the hospital. Because, you know, I'm a huge hypochondriac. So I'm like, oh, my butt cheek's on fire. You know, I was driving. So I was like, I need some water. I need to go to the restroom and, like, wash it off if it's poison ivy. So we're driving around. You know, I have my butt cheek up in the air because it's stinging, you know, up the wazoo. And so we're driving around. And finally, we come up this campground. And we rush in there. And, you know, I'm telling the lady, I'm like, hey, is there a restroom I can use? Like, she's like, oh, what's going on? I'm like, well, um you know, can I ask you about the poison ivy in this area? She's like, oh, yeah, what happened? Where? Well, you know, it's on my butt cheek. (laughs) And she goes, oh. And then finally this gentleman goes, oh, did you sit on one of these? And guess what? It was a stinging nettle. I had sat in right into a bed of stinging nettle. And so, yeah. What were the chances? Exactly, right? In the entire park. So uh, that's a story that I always retell that, you know, and my friend always says, you know, for all the parks you go to, you would think you would know better than to be sitting on a stinging nettle. (sighs) Um, Mm. Yeah. So we're if we were friends before, we're best friends now. I mean, well, you know, yeah, (laughs) now, you know, she's a ride or die. So, (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that's quite embarrassing. But I know better now. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh. Who would you say has been your biggest influence, either professionally or personally? Um, you know, and it's a, it's a question I've been thinking about, and I was trying to think about one specific person or a figure. And, you know, I think for me, uh, it's a little bit of everybody that I've kind of known in my life. Um I feel like whether they were a good experience or a bad experience, um, I've learned something from it and it kind of shaped me as a person I am today. And so, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say it's, you know, I know a lot of people say it's, oh, it's your parents or this figure, but yeah, but I don't know. For me, it's a little bit of everybody. So just the world. Yeah. I mean, just, well, I mean, really it's more of the people who've gone kind of are in my life or gone through my life, you know? Right. Yeah. That's a good answer. Nothing yeah. wrong with that at all. Uh, so if you had a free plane ticket to anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Scotland. 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 Absolutely. What? I would go to the Scotland, specifically the Highlands. Okay. Okay. And I know this. So, you know, earlier I was saying, I, I, I read some. Are these, there's, oh, it's in one of these books. Is that what it is? <laughs> Do you watch that show? What is it called? Uh, the... Oh, Outlander? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, I, I knew have. it. Okay. Yeah. I know. Believe it or not, I'm a hopeless romantic. <laughs> yeah, okay. If you I haven't guess. figured it out by now, now you know. I've said it as clear as I can. Um, so, yeah, I've actually been there. I've been there when I was younger, and uh, it was a high, high school senior trip that I had gone to, and it's been a long time. So, if I could go back, it would be Scotland. And it's just, I remember it being so green and beautiful. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just, and their accents, right? <laughs> I just absolutely love their accents. And yeah, I just had a really good experience. So, I'd rather go somewhere where I've been to to revisit rather than, you know, somewhere I haven't gone to before. So that's why I'd go to Scotland. I like it. Mm -hmm. Me too. (laughs) Uh, If you had three albums that you could only listen to for the rest of your life, which albums would they be and why? Ooh. Um, So I'm not very good at identifying albums specifically. I know. I'm culturally deprived, and that's <laughs> okay. self-deprived. I've kind of lived under a rock, so people ask me things, and I don't know a lot of things culturally, and I'm a little ashamed to admit it, but it is what it is at this point. Right. <laughs> um, so I absolutely love Eminem. Okay. I know. I just love that man. Why? I couldn't tell you, but I just love Eminem. Are so. we talking like the the older Eminem or the newer Ooh, Eminem, so that uh, maybe we can narrow it down a little bit, I guess. Yeah, right? I don't know if I, mean, I don't really like his new stuff. I mean, I love his like Slim Shady days too. Okay. Um, like I really love the Eight Mile soundtrack, you know, for the movie and all. Um, and you know, you had asked why, and I don't know. I've always thought like, you know, he's come a long way, and just the things he's been through. I've always kind of 
admire that. And okay. I know he's not the only rapper out there that's like that, but yeah, I've always loved his music. Um, and this is totally another extreme is um, I would probably listen to, there's a new, it's not, it's new for me, but there's this band called Il Devo. Il yeah. Devo. And they do kind of like classical, like they're acapella, but there are these four guys who does the whole like baritone, you know, tenor and type of music, I guess. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've really been into their music. I've recently gone to a concert too. They're great live. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd probably listen to them. And then I would listen to, um, okay, this is old K-pop. For those of you who don't know K-pop, Korean pop. So I'm a fop, right? Fresh off the boat from Korea because I was okay. born in, born there. Yes. Yeah. So there is a Korean band called H.O.T. And H.O.T. stands for High Five of Teenagers. I know, it's lame. It's the 1990s. They're the first K-pop, one of the first K-pop bands in the night or 90s, you know, late 90s. Um, so yeah, their music. You know, you can never go wrong with oldies but goodies for K-pop. I can't wait to look that up. <laughs> That'll be interesting. <laughs> memory lane. It's it's down memory lane. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, do you do you have any parting words of encouragement for us? Uh, um, you know, well, I guess I don't know if it's for more for encouragement. This is kind of what um what I kind of live by is um i know this sounds so cliche and i'm all about quotes and stuff but i always say older and bolder (laughs) um i've noticed uh you know like as a person um you know i'm not you know i mean when i say i'm old you know people be like oh you're not old you're just in your 30s but you know i think there's lots of confidence and self-awareness that i've developed over the years you know something i've known in my 20s now my 30s and so I've been confident more as a person and, you know, I always think, man, I was so timid and shy in my 20s, you know, like what you see or what you hear of my personality, like you didn't see any of that in my 20s. And so I kind of think, oh, I'm making up for it. So I always because I was so self-conscious of like just what everybody thought and just how people were. Right. So I wish I was a little bit bolder. And so we want to tell people like, hey, you know what? Don't think about what other people say. Just be bold and do what you want to do. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. If you're happy, then we're all good. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Hey, Eden, thank you so much for being on the podcast and for uh, letting us kind of get a window into uh, into your perspective and in life. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the winds are picking up and the barnacles are collecting on the bow. Time for us to set sail, me hearties. This episode was brought to you by the Queen of Hearts and the other 51 loyal subjects. Produced by the Voices in My Head and edited by that worm-eating weirdo, Patchy the Parrot. Music by the Magic School Bus Band. Remember, we are always on the lookout for new guests and stories that we can bring your way. So if you know someone who is dying to tell their story, email us at peglegpodcast at gmail.com. And as always, remember, keep your booty close and your sword sharp, lest you find yourself swabbing the deck on the bottom of Davy Jones's locker. Until we meet again.